Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with some more Rise of Mordor action for you today and today we have a huge uh, Dwarven army defending against uh, an Elven and a Gondorian army on the assault. We are at Ker Andros today, um, which is a pretty cool map, I won't lie, it's got two uh, very strong walls to defend and um, yes, as you can see here, we have a big Dwarven army defending on its own. I mean. It's big for a Dwarven army, it's nearly 3,000 men, and the Dwarves are pretty tough. You can see the balance of power is not in favour of the Dwarves, merely on numbers. Um, but in quality, these uh, these Dwarves, they're pretty nasty. So here we go, Gondor has landed straight away, some Gondor sword infantry onto the walls, and uh, the Dwarves are already ready to defend the bottom of the walls where they'll come off. We have uh, Lindon here today as well. Um, the Linden Elves are here, and they are getting absolutely hammered by the crossbows as they come off here. This is going to be a disadvantage for them. They don't have any shields, so they will be um, being focused down quite a lot, uh, mainly because they just can't protect themselves. But if you've been enjoying the content at the moment and you want to see more Rise Mortar action, please do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. Um, and also, don't forget to join the Discord if you'd like to get involved in some of these battles, as this was done with uh, several of the Discord players. I, myself, am playing as Lindon. Um, but yeah, the Discord uh, link is in the description if you'd like to join and get involved in Rise of Mordor or any Total War uh, battle. But yeah, so there we go. The gates have fallen. Um, so we can now rush through the gates and do our work uh, if we need to. But I don't think we any of us realize that the gate has been taken that we can just go through yet. Also, my troops are miles back, so they are not going to be joining the fight anytime soon. And then that's, there you go, another gate has fallen, it's this one over here. Uh, unfortunately, we have taken a few losses from just the stupid tower animation that happens. But here we go, so it's going to be one of the first combats of the battle. Elves versus dwarves, who will win? It's like the Battle of Five Armies all over again. Apart from there's three armies, no orcs, and the men of Gondor are here. So there's absolutely nothing like it. But yes, here we go. I mean, the elves should do okay here. I mean, these shock infantry are very nasty. So they should eventually break through this uh, axe warrior unit. How is Gondor faring? Gondor is faring pretty poorly. It's already uh, wavering. It's, this unit is already beaten up. Um, I had a feeling this might be the case. Gondor is uh, massively weaker than these two uh, factions themselves. But look at this. It's the, it's the war of the silver armor. And the war against small people, also known as dwarves. There you go, that first Gondor unit already broken. And um, the Elder unit here is struggling to get off the walls, and there you go. They go off the walls now. Gondor over here, I'm sure, is having just as much difficulty. It looks like he's, there's a big old queue forming up here to get down. It's like, after you, no, after you. I don't want to face the dwarves today. Yeah, they are really pinned in at the wall. Like, these guys coming off are like, God, there's no space for us. Hold your breath. We're going to need every inch of space we can get. That is the only uh, annoying thing, is that these two walls here, they cast a massive shadow over uh, the next bit. So, I mean, it's still pretty easy to see. Luckily, these guys are like in bright silver. I think Gondor has won here at this point. Uh, I think there was a fight here. Well, it was like a tiny fight. I think like it was the retreating unit from one of these. Um, but yeah, now Gondor can surround these two swords here. But to be honest, I don't think that's going to make a big issue. I think Gondor will quite happily fight that. Uh, not Gondor, um, Erebor will quite happily fight that. This is the only combat that has actually been won decisively. And I mean, well, they're losing slightly. Uh, it says for them, though, oh, there you go. Combat even now. All of a sudden, it's gone back to normal. But uh, we're doing okay, I would say. I mean, the initial uh, stats looking 200 to 300 killed. 200 dwarves killed to 300 attackers. That's not bad. Um, Erebor Axe Warrior is here, pretty beaten up. This is probably where most of the fighting is, uh, most of the killing has taken place. Just being a sheer amount of elves here.
But yes, so the hatred of dwarves and elves is being reignited. I mean, these guys hate each other like throughout the entirety of the Third Age. They just seem to like, for no re like explained reason really, they just seem to hate each other. I mean, I guess they just because the elves never keep come to the dwarves' aid like at Erebor and like they don't make their promises. And I guess it's just dwarves are stubborn people as well. Hard to be friends with stubborn people. And look at this, both sides losing here. Um, as it goes, I'd say that the Dwarves will win just due to numbers. Um, but who knows? I mean, I think it's because the crossbow fire up here. Um, I mean, they're not firing, like, in volleys at the moment, but look at the sheer amount of spears in reserve. Um, but yeah, so, these crossbows have a deadly view down there. They literally can just pick targets and just, uh, take out these elves, which is probably why the elves are doing okay. And there you go, another volley goes off, and a few more elves drop. And it's going to be the same on this side as well. If I can, uh, there you go. They're firing down there. Actually, they can't really see. They, I think they're firing at the uh, elves over here. And they can have to fire through a building. But we now have elven archers coming onto the wall. With their uh, longbows. I guess I guess it would be a, what you count as a longbow. And then we also have Gondorian archers as well getting ready. I think they're going to go up onto the wall. They're certainly uh, getting close. Gondor also has an artillery piece, which is very, very huge. That could be very useful. Uh, I don't know what Gondor was going for. He's going for this fort tower here, I think. Or it's damaged, certainly, so he must have shot it at some point. But here we go. So, in response to uh, in response to the archers going up onto the wall, Erebor has sent his axe warriors up, but luckily the elves just about got some Noldorian swords up there to stop them. So the archers are okay to carry on fighting, and this fresh unit of Noldorian swords should beat this Erebor axe warrior unit. Which is uh, severely depleted. But they did actually beat this one down here. They routed that unit. Uh, I don't know where the remains went. I think they did just break in instantly and die. Um, but yeah, they won that first combat over here. The elves are still struggling. They outnumber the dwarves. Probably outskill them as well just because they live forever. And train forever. But no... The dwarves, just because they've got big, strong armor, just refuse to die. They have in I think the dwarves have like 93 uh, armor on these, uh, on some of their swords and spears, um, which is, well, nearly double what the elves have. I think the elves have 50, the Noldorian elves have 50 armor on their Noldorian swords. That's not upgraded in fairness. I don't think the dwarves are upgraded either. I could be wrong there though. But yeah, so these guys are a pain to kill. And it requires shooting them in the back, like I'm kind of doing now. But uh, yeah, so this angle of the elves is literally, they're firing, it looks like they're firing across there. They're actually just firing directly down. Um, and trying to just take out these dwarves, which is a really good angle. And uh, in response, Erebor has sent up some of his own crossbows. I don't think he's got the great angle here. Uh, and it's probably why this unit's not firing. Um, because he can't really get a great angle. There's another elven archer unit here doing exactly the same thing. Firing into the backs of these dwarves. And there you go, they're finally losing. And then the Noldorian swords here, uh, winning in combat as well. They were temporarily. These elven archers here need to start firing at something. Probably at crossbows up here. Because those crossbows that were now, oh no, there's still more crossbows. Jeez, dwarves, the dwarves have a lot of crossbows. I never realized. They've got about five units. But here we go, so we've got uh, some elites now inside the city. We've got the shipwright nobles. If you've not seen them, this is the elite unit. You can only bring three of them. I have two here and a general unit of another. And a nice silver armor. You can tell they're elite because they they have silver armor while the rest of the army has gold. Uh, and here we go. So it looks like a fresh unit of Noldor and Swords having to go in. Look at like... I mean, to be fair, this unit here, this Noldorian Swords and this Erebor Axe Warrior unit did whittle themselves down to barely anything. There's 11 versus 19, or 18 now it would have been. Um, but fresh units are coming for both sides. Uh, Erebor Axe Warrior is here, 62. And we've got a 77 Noldorian uh, Sword in there. But it does look like actually this crossbow unit does have a bit of an angle. It's certainly been picking some off. Oh uh, 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 dear, can't speak. Words are hard. 83 left. And... An arch unit is now actually down on the ground as well, fighting it out. Um, this was a misclick. I did not want my elves just to go through here. And I think the uh, they're just getting free kills here. But 
is help he can surround these guys and kill them uh, a lot quicker. And there you go. Now it looks like Gondol's... Well, he broke through, but he's now actually got himself surrounded as well. He's got some Gondol Sword Infantry. I'm not sure how they got around, but they did. And uh, now they're kind of surrounded. They can get... I think, uh, yeah, some spears are coming up. And here we go. Luckily, the elves are coming to the rescue because they're going through the gate because we finally realized the gate is open. And there we go. So Noldorian uh, swords coming in. They will certainly help there. We also have some Noldorian swords going into the back of the spear guards, Verabor. And these guys are now also going to get uh, surrounded and they'll slowly get killed off. Shock against uh, spears is never that good now. Um, they kind of get absolutely mauled. That is always good to see. And there you go. Finally, we break that unit there. But look how many uh, Noldorian archers died first and because of my mistake. About 40 of them. Um, and then this one lost quite a lot as well. They gave focus off on the walls, which, is the, yeah, they came off the walls. So, yeah, my archers, I've not been so, uh, not been really good with them. Let's put it like that. These Noldorian archers here are also getting focused down slowly. And I don't even know why. They're not even firing back. Um, so, I presume, yeah, they're getting focused down by these crossbows over here. So... I think I forgot about these guys, and yeah, they're just getting focused down. And this is a real shame to see happen. Because we could have used their arrows. It does look like Gondor over here is slowly, slowly, but surely breaking away through. I mean, it's taking forever. Um, I've initially broken through the first line of defense and are now into the second line. Um... Or the second wave of defenders, you'd say. I don't think the lines have really changed. Gondor is still fighting the initial units that fight, like were at the walls. Shows how tough the dwarves are against most factions. I mean, Gondor's not a, a bad faction. These are good units. Uh, the Gondor Sword Infantry is a really good unit. Uh, it'll probably beat most evil faction units. But the dwarves, they are... They're something else. They are something else. There you go, Erebor is finally losing this gate, and it means that Gondor can swarm through uh, his reserves. I mean, he's got quite a few reserves. He's got Pelagir Marines, he's got that artillery, he's got plenty more swords, and he's got some uh, Fountain Guard, which is going to be useful. But there, look at that. This unit here, 39 Noldorian archers left, and I've just let it get focused down. Still fighting on the walls as well. They're just about to break, and then uh, this unit here, er Erebor Axwar, is now surrounded by Gondorian swords. So it's like became... The envelopment that happened here, uh, when they were trying to envelop the sword infantry unit, has now meant that they've been enveloped. It's a counter envelopment. I'm sure. Uh, I don't know who. Someone will be proud. Who did this counter envelopment in history? I don't know. Ah, oh, the Gauls did it over Caesar, but that didn't end so well for them. That did end with a lot of dead Gauls. Yes, yeah, so it looks like this is going to be wrapped up pretty soon. These uh, dwarves are being penned back. Uh, Gondor has now moved on to the next line of defense. These spears. If it was hard enough breaking through a sword line, a spear line is going to be harder to break through because these guys are ex... Well, spears are obviously better in defense than swords. So, uh, we'll have to see what happens here. But the spears shouldn't get too many kills. And there you go. They've already started coming down this way as well. So, the dwarves have like, got sort of a right angle defense going on here. It's really cool to look at. And they're, I mean, I just can't get enough of their armor. Their armor is by far and away the greatest. Uh, or some of the greatest in this. I think, like, the elves and the dwarves just look beautiful. I mean, I say this for every faction. Um, I, like, go through, like, a period of I've not played with, like, a certain faction. And then I come back and I go, oh, these guys look so awesome. Why don't I play them more? But, yeah, here comes Shipwright Nobles. Um... Come in, surround, and then in comes some Noldorian swords as well. Surround these Grim Hammers, which have been sent down to fight. Very early on, this is the elite units that get sent in. These are the shock infantry. It's going to bring three of these. And here we go. So Elves already getting focused on. Look at this. About six died. And they're chasing down the archers here. Trying to catch these guys. Oh, look at this poor guy. He's just crawling. And then this unit here, this sword unit here, is going to surround these uh, spears. And make it hard 
for the uh, for Gondor, basically. Oh, uh, not for Gondor, for the uh, dwarves. And make it easy for Gondor, hopefully. Because Gondor needs the help. Gondor is just about beating the units here at this wall. How many lives are lost for Gondor is uh, probably ridiculous. But we have killed about half of uh, the enemy army. And he has killed about a thousand uh, of ours. Probably, no, about a thousand five hundred of ours. Um, but we are now onto this defense. Which is uh, really, really hard to break through. I am not going to lie to you guys. This is going to be hard. There's, uh, he's got four units of spears in reserve to hold that line. And these two spear units don't look like they're breaking anytime soon, even though they've been rear charged. Um, we could probably rear charge them and shoot them in the rear, and they'd probably still be fine. The tide of battle apparently turning in our favour, but they don't realise that we have one of the most, like, the hardest choke points to take in this map. Kerondros is really, really hard to take when you get through the second layer of defence, then you've like, got to attack here. You've got crossbows and towers to face. Um, it is going to be a messy, messy fight. It's going to cost a lot of elven and men lives and dwarven lives, obviously. I'm sure Sauron's licking his lips at seeing this. Men, elves and uh, dwarves fighting each other. After this, like, will have happen. Like, a, a huge orc army would just appear. Oh, I have, like, a Noldorian sword unit all the way back here that I didn't even realize. Wow. Oh, it's still in the ram. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, I have a unit back there. I didn't even know about that I had. Well, that may, have, that may come in handy. But the elves are now into the final uh, defense. To the spear guard of Erebor already. And what's coming up now? Gondor's also coming up. He's sending up some infantry as well. And just going to be sheer numbers that are going to have to try and break through this. Force the uh, dwarven line back. I mean, it's already looking thin here, to be fair. But I'm sure that won't last long. I'm sure they'll throw in more. I mean, they actually got all the way up to here to the elves. And then they've been forced back down. Yeah, you can see here, look at this, it's going to form shield wall. And, uh, nothing's getting through that, that shield wall. I just love the officer for the, like, for any uh, dwarven unit. He's just got, like, his own hammer. Just takes names. He's like, right, you're next, then it's you, then it's you. And you're all going to die because I've got this big hammer. But yeah, here we go. A general retreat happening. Decided that this is not worth uh, the lives of our men as some more uh, elves get impaled. Ugh. And here we go. So we've now got Pelagir Marines coming up. And they're going to throw Javis into this uh, dwarven line. And I mean, what are the numbers currently at? They're at 103. Can we get that lower? I do love the Pelagir Marines. Javis! Um, but yeah, currently it's 99. I mean, this is doing some damage. This is what matters. Uh, they've still got a lot of ammo to go through as well. There we go, 94. Yeah, these guys are going to get through their ammo. I can hear the artillery firing as well. Yeah, they are literally firing up at, like, a dwarven line that is... I mean, in fairness, these dwarves haven't got their shields, like, front. So they should be getting impaled. And let, there you go, there you go. And now they're going to charge down on the dwarves. They've had enough of these Pelagir Marines. And the elves will respond, as will the men of Gondor. And the combat marine uh, starts again. But this is a big win for uh, the elves and men. Because that means the dwarves are out of their shield wall formation here. And they can... They've actually surrounded them because they've kind of like, when they go through each other's lines, they're now in behind. Whether that's a good thing, who knows. They're probably going to get focused down by crossbows. We have elven archers now up here at the back. They're getting ready. To, I think they're firing onto the reserves. Um, whether they're actually being successful, who knows. But here come the reserves. Uh, 
an artillery piece knocking out the uh, siege tower. The idea for this was uh, the Gondor player thing uh, thought was to take out some of these uh, crossbows. And it did. It took out quite a lot of these crossbows. Um, whether it was still worth it, who knows. We might have been better just uh, destroying these spear lines. But it's setting into a big old uh, grind now. Well, but while this has been happening, these dwarves over here have still been holding. They're just about to die, really. But, I mean, actually, I say they're just about to die. There's still loads of them in here. Um, but, yeah, these guys just would not break. And it was just making... The further we got around this corner, the easier it was for those crossbows up there. And um, I'll show you the angle they now have. Uh, the angle these crossbows now have is pretty nasty. You can see my uh, unit of Noldorian swords losing, even though it's surrounding a unit. Um, but yeah, these guys are now firing, literally down into the backs of all of those troops, and are just taking names. I'm sure that these guys are getting well into the 200s, if not more kills. Yes, yeah, so there's another spear line being formed here, sadly. But look at this, the Pelagian Marines desperately trying to get, hit these guys. You can see all, look at all of these spears that are just impaled into these, a cup, like these few guys in the corner. But this spear line is by far and away lost for the dwarves. I think they're both losing decisively yet. Um, so, uh, probably a poor move by him, but he did want to get rid of those Pelagir Marines. And uh, I, I can see that why that's why he did it then. But luckily... Crossbows are starting to run out of ammo. He's got supply barrels here. I don't know whether he'll use them. He, sh I mean, he, he could. It would be very awful for our, uh, for our forces. But he could use those uh, supply barrels. I like how the supply barrels are wavering over there for no reason. But yet yeah, more men bl breaking. I believe that's uh, my unit over here. Yet yeah, that's surrounded the dwarves, and it just won't. These dwarves just won't break. Losing decisively won't break man they're hard to kill but there's not many of them which is I guess the balancing thing I mean there is 3,000 of them which is still one too many But yeah, so it looks like the dwarves are finally going to get sandwiched in. A dwarven sandwich with two bits of Gondor in there. I'm sure that would be tasty. I'm sure... I mean, I'm sure the orcs have, that are definitely going to be arriving at some point and just be like, Oh, all this man flesh that's been left around. That's good. But yeah, there we go. We take it on the other tower as well, which also has done damage to the crossbows up here. Not as much. I don't think this one didn't. Yeah, it got me down to 92. We definitely haven't killed any of these uh, crossbows by shooting them because they're in such a nasty position. Um, but yeah, we've got such a big blob down here. We really need to move this blob. Uh, it's making it far too easy for the crossbows. I mean, they're not firing very uh, regularly at the moment. They're firing like only occasionally. But here we go. It looks like uh, the archers are now moving. Looks like they're going to try and go for new angles. I mean, there you go. That's probably why. Probably going over to move to where Gondol's are. Because Gondol's got a really good angle. I mean, we can't see it. But apparently Gondol's a really good angle. And he can fire literally into the side of these reserve units here. I mean, he's not done... He's only killed three of them. Um, whether he actually killed them with the archers or with the Pelagir Marines. Who knows? So, whether the angle is doing anything, who no uh, we don't know. But, at least it's softening them up a little bit before this blob gets here um, this is probably not a really good idea but like in most total wars it is not a good idea to blob uh, and we probably shouldn't have blobbed here either but we probably won't send any more in for a very long time and also uh, you gotta just to try and kill these dwarves man these dwarves are nasty and hard to kill but it does look like we've got pikes coming up as well the fountain guard are getting ready I think the plan is to uh, break through this line and then the Fountain Guard takes on the fresh line. 
which is very good. Oh, the crossbows, they're firing right. That was a direct crossbow, like, fire straight into the back of these guys. And there you go, Gondor Infantry being given the order to fall back to the safety of the, uh, safety of the buildings. But there you go, that, uh, spear unit is broken. We're now on to, uh, well, what's next? I am falling back. Gondor is going to go up and support his pikes, which are just coming up now. Or one of his pikes. But yeah, you can see these guys are getting arrows like into them. They just don't care. I'll shake it off. Here comes another volley. Yeah, they don't mind. This this guy here in the front line's got about two or three in him. Yeah, he's fine. He'll shake it off. And there's the pikes. I mean, they need to get forward ever so slightly. Start pokey pokeying these dwarves. This is what it's become. It's become a huge choke point, really, now. At this point, it's, and look at that. There's 2,600 uh, of them, uh, the allies left, or, or the men and the elves, and there's 800 dwarves. But these 800 dwarves could probably hold off most of this force because there's just no way through. No way through. These guys aren't dying quickly enough. And there you go. It looks like some crossbows are getting off the wall. Instead of resupplying, they're going to, uh, I guess, be using melee. Who knows? But I mean, that's not good. I mean, they, I mean, you can see how many kills these guys got. They got a silver chevron because of it. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of kills they've got. If they've silver chevron themselves up, I mean, I mean, there's another one that silver chevron itself up as well. And then there's still the unit here ready with fresh ammo. It's got 88 men in it, but it's got fresh ammo. 88 crossbows is nasty. And then we've got another unit here on basically full ammo. My uh, elves are now moving again. I think I'm going to put them up on this wall eventually. And uh, we're going to try and fire from an elevated position down onto this slope. Which is the plan. So I'm still not getting great angles over here. It does look like the pikes are starting to force uh, these dwarves back. Ever so slowly killing these guys. But, like, they're not really. I mean, this crossbow unit is now leaving here. Because I presume this one's going to go up onto the wall. But, I mean, we've not got much in reserve. Um, got all of this, really. I mean, and we have that sword unit out there, which I forgot I had. We'll put it like that. Um, but, yeah, we've got all of this, basically. We've got these archers as well. And the archers can fight well in combat. Or they should be able to. And they, I mean, they probably should fight well in combat against anything other than dwarves. But yeah, here you go. So it looks like the elves are now going up onto this excellent... Well, I'm saying excellent. It's still not great. I mean, they've got the range that they can do this. But they can fire from that wall all the way onto the dwarves over there, which you can just about see. And they're actually falling back. It is forcing the dwarves to fall back. And here we go. So Gondor is going to charge on through. And since they had the attack order to attack the spears, they kind of do push through the... Uh, the crossbows, which is unfortunate. So this crossbow unit is going to get chopped down a bit. As are the dwarves. But it has allowed us a small breakthrough. Even if it's the tiniest of breakthroughs. And the same over here on this side. Archers. But these, there's not as many here. And these guys aren't even looking the right way. I've just realized. Not even looking the right way. You're looking out towards uh, the front. Like anything's coming. I mean, I guess they're ready for the... Uh, Inevitable dwarven under uh, dwarven orcish attack, which will surely come now. <laughs> yeah, you can just about see the dwarves over there. Fire men, fire. Yeah, the pikes in here now, the Pelagian marines, all sorts, trying to break through. And I'm sure it won't be long. And there you go. Yeah, the general is in here now. Look at this floating rubble. It's defying gravity. Um, but yeah, so now we've got the general in the Grim Hammers. The final Grim Hammer unit. And I'm sure they'll take plenty of names down with them. Especially with the support of the uh, artillery. Oh, not the artillery. The archers. 
They should do just fine. It's like having an officer, an officer unit, because they have them here as well, like in the uh, unit of the uh, spear guard. I don't know if that is actually a spear guard. That might be a grim hammer, but still, they do have them in the officer unit. And it's pretty cool. Or, like the officer in any unit is a grim hammer, so they have like a, a unit of officers almost. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it looks like it's just going to become a massive grind. The second pike unit's already coming up. Another fountain guard. Coming into it. I mean, this is a serious blob now. Uh, and, I mean, Gondol's got reserves ready at the bottom of the hill. I mean, yeah, this Pike unit's down to 100 men. I don't know whether it was worth sending in the next one yet. But you can see, like, the sea of Pikes here. Hopefully they'll force these, uh, these guys back. I mean, they should do a lot of damage to the Grim Hammers because it's a shock infantry unit. But then this is the Dwarves, so the likelihood is it probably doesn't. It probably does absolutely nothing. But yeah, I mean, we're running out of reserves. I mean, these reserves are pretty beaten up. They're probably not going to do much. We've got archers over here. These guys might do okay, but again, who knows? Uh, it's, the, it's the Dwarves. Like, an, a Gondorian arch unit could probably fight against the fairly... A pretty beaten up dwarven unit, and the dwarves would still come out on top. There we go. It does look like more reserves in as more units waver and break for Gondor and for uh, Linden. And here come the crossbows. Firing, ex just using every crossbow bolt they have. Not a single one going to waste. Must hit every... I mean, I'm saying you must hit something if you fire in there. How can you not hit anything uh, in there? Like these crossbows are firing down into that. They are firing into that. That is a huge blob. You cannot miss. If you miss, you might as well just use the crossbow on yourself. No point being a crossbow if you can't hit in here. But then again, you probably miss while trying to uh, trying to execute yourself. If you're missing down there, you're not going to hit yourself at two meters or less than that. But these pikes now breaking through or like pushing them back. I mean, ever so slowly. I mean, you can sort of see, yeah, you can sort of see, you can see the feet of uh, like the Noldorians where the dwarves used to be holding their line. At least the pikes are forcing these guys back up the hill. Whether that's actually a good thing, who knows? It probably isn't a good thing. It's so good to see like the sea of gold and then you just see like in there, a uh, sea of silver, sorry, and then in there you see like bits of gold and just like that's the elves just participating. But yeah, it looks like more Gondorian swords in there. Look at this, it's so blobbed up. It's so Imagine being in like the mill here, you'd be like so claustrophobic. Crushed as well. There in, go in some crossbows, hold the line, thicken this dwarven line, which is all pretty thick. And these dwarven crossbows have got armor for days as well. They are... Uh, not easy to kill with archers. Uh, combat, they're a bit easier, but with the sheer amount of uh, dwarves in there, they'll probably do okay. Noldorian archers now have ammo. Look at this. <laughs> Noldorian archers just walk, uh, like the Gondor troops just walking by, like, just don't go up there. Telling the uh, archers, don't go up there. It's a massacre. They have so many crossbows. These guys cheering for some reason after hearing that news. They're like, yes, it's a massacre. We want to die to crossbows. And here they come. I mean, it looks like the dwarves are going to force their way back down the hill. Or try to. I'd uh, run into the pikes doing that, surely.
can see all the blood splatters coming off the dwarves, but not many dwarves dying. And the Grim Hammers have only lost 12 men since they've been in combat. Insane. Insane, really. Um, but we're about halfway through, uh, like, the point, the period of, like, the grind at this gate here. Um, and we've still not got anywhere. I mean, yeah, it started, must have been about, like, 18 minutes to start out. It might have been later than, um, been longer than that. Um, but it does look like the dwarves are starting to thin ever so slightly. I mean, the spear guard's looking thin. But now there's Grim Hammers and Crossbows in here, they could just hold forever, to be honest. I mean, we're running out of stuff. It's basically down to... I mean, Gondol's got one unit of fresh infantry left. Um, I have a collection of troops that are uh, various freshness. And I have this one back here, which I never realised. I have, so uh, that's interesting. We have the uh, archers here still firing. They are going to be needed. We're going to need every arrow from them just to focus on these Grim Hammers. Pelagir Marines over here. They've run out of javis, so it's time to get it up and close. But I mean, this side, in fairness, there's not many spear guards left. It's just a, it looks like just mainly crossbows, and the spear guard look pretty bullied up. This is certainly the area that they want to try and break through. Uh, if I was Gondor. It does look glorious, though. It does give me in the mood to watch Lord of the Rings again. I don't know about you guys, but playing this game. Does get me in the mood to watch Lord of the Rings. And then Lord of the Rings gets me in the mood to watch uh, play this again. Uh, so, I mean, it's just infectious. It just goes on and on. An everlasting loop of Lord of the Rings watching or playing Rise of Mordor. But yeah, I mean, the crossbows are actually getting a pretty hard. It's now getting pretty hard to uh, fire them. They're now firing fire arrows down there. And only occasionally. The angle is getting pretty hard for them now. They are having to rely on anything that comes and sits up here. Which looks like it's going to be some shipwright nobles are being sent up next. I don't know whether we need more for this blob, but I mean, more blo more is going in for the blob. I mean, actually, this flank here is uh, nearly gone. And there you go, the fountain guard really pushing forward. That's going to cost them a lot of men, I have a feeling. Just, like, marching through here, like, as a found guard, this is not good for pikes. It's not healthy. Just marching on through. They're just going to get cut down. They're getting their swords out. So that's played into the dwarven hands. That's a big win for the dwarves, you could say. This, this found guard unit here. Basically committing uh, seppuku. Just asking to be, uh, have a sword run through them. But, I mean, this is a big area now to hit now with the, the archers. Because they forced their way down. And the, there you go. We've got Shipwright Nobles going in. The Elite Silver Boys. They're in here now. And will they do any better? So far it looks like it's a no. I mean they've cut down a few boys. But we have also seen a lot of them drop. Look at this. There's pikes are now flanking. And just trying to stab anyone that's like... Pushes too far forward. It's coming insanely bloody. I imagine what like the bodies are under here. It must be insane. The amount of bodies, the sheer amount, would be ridiculous. The general is surely got to be like being up. I mean, he's actually losing now. The general is losing decisively. 60 men left though, so I mean, got to get through a lot of the, the general unit before we got to worry about anything. And there you go, more archers firing, uh, or crossbows firing fire arrows. Really trying to break stuff. Uh, our general now, under, my general now under attack. He's being uh, focused down from out here. Don't actually know where he is. There he is. He's a shipwright noble unit. So he's a, he's a he is a uh, shielded unit, so he should be okay. I don't think they'll be able to take him out anytime soon.
I mean, the ship right noble certainly have forced us back this flank, um, which needed doing, to be honest. It was kind of getting a little out of hand. But we still can't break through. And there, just as I say it, Gondor has broken through. This side over here is... It's sort of a push through. It sort of isn't. But there is a gap here. He tried to go in column formation. Some of the unit did get caught. Um, and he's kind of like returning, uh, retreating to go and deal with it. But the dwarves will need to respond now. They sort of have a unit in behind us, Gondor. And this is going to make a difference now. And anything being mobilized? Nothing as yet. Elven archers running out of ammo. They, they will be sent to the front lines. And here we go. It looks like, look at this. A unit now with just under half uh, ammo left. Having to be sent down to go and deal with this uh, incursion of Gondorian troops. Which is really, really good for uh, the attackers. I mean, the spear guard unit's losing decisively. They might break very soon. Here comes the uh, Gondorian soldiers. Going to deal with the crossbows. They should beat them. They're pretty bloodied up, actually. I don't know if they've uh, taken fire from... They might have been sat in that breach point at some point. They've taken fire there, but... They should break these guys now. Um, any more movement going on? Looks like... Looks like crossbows are fine there, staying on the wall. I think the other crossbow unit's coming off as well. Another Gondorian unit, a small one, getting around. It's actually breaking. Or wavering. And it's just going behind the lines. Like, yes, we're in, boys. Oh, but it's pretty scary back here. And there you go, they break. That's so stupid. They're just like, oh, we've made it through. After how many, like, thousands of us have died here. And they're just like, no, it's just too scary. We can't, we can't use this. But we have lost a lot. We've lost about another thousand men. They've lost 400. Um, so that probably would have continued to happen. Um, but yes, the cash is sustained. The general is still alive. And here we go. We've got an arch unit now doing the same thing. Trying to get behind. And there's the general has fallen for the dwarves. That is going to be, well, I say huge, but the dwarves are still pretty damn elite and will probably hold anyway. Um, but yes, yeah, so there you go. Unit winning. Oh, it was combat even now. But I think this unit here of Crossbus is staying up and it's going to shoot into the backs of these guys. Which is going to be very painful this uh, Gondorian unit but yeah the archers are now in behind as is Gondor and that is going to make it very very uh, difficult for the dwarves to come back from this this might seal their fate I mean if they can route this Gondorian uh, arch unit here and then they can shoot all the uh, archers back here then they, they are back to the norm that it was but there's a lot of Gondorians to get through here look at that these guys just so they're not even in the right formation. They're just firing occasionally. And they're just taking out Gondorian uh, soldiers. Left, right, and center. And there we go. Another unit going up. A fairly fresh unit of Noldorian swords going up. No threat of being shot now because we've got no crossbows on the wall. So I think the reserves are all getting up to the front line as well. Yeah. What is left of the... What's left of the reserves? Uh, yeah, that unit's still left back there. A fresh hundred men. Never to see action. Um, yeah, there you go. This unit's not losing decisively, or losing, just because it's getting shot in the back. So these guys actually will lose to these uh, crossbows. It shows how strong the crossbows are. I know they've got support from this crossbow unit, but uh, it does show that even still they're fighting crossbows, they're losing besides uh, losing. Like, they can't beat them, like, they should still probably beat these guys. And then, uh, well, and that's it. And now there's Gondorian archers in here. Jeez, there's so much in it. And I mean, there you go. A massive chain route. Um, so these airborne crossbows have been sent in. Everything's starting to waver. And that is going to be it for the battle. The dwarves put a valiant defense, but it is not enough. And they have been defeated. And a Pyrrhic victory for Linden and Gondor. So we'll end the replay and have a look at the end results. So yes, I was playing as Linden, um, and Aiden was playing as Gondor, and Dodge God was playing as Erebor. So well played to both of them, and thank you for joining. It was an excellent, excellent siege battle. Um, yeah, so we'll go through, I guess, the end results quickly. So the best unit, I think, for... Well, my Shipwright Noble's getting 101, and they 
got pretty beaten up, which is a bit of a shame. These guys, I definitely didn't use the full ability. Um, Noldorian Swords, I think the best one's got 188 uh, kills, and they are, well, didn't live to tell the tale. My Arch has only got 43 kills. Even though they're getting some rear shots on dwarves and stuff like that, they still couldn't kill enough of them. Their armor was just so insane. Um, like, if I was fighting any other army, I'm sure these guys would have racked up kills. And then we'll go on to Aiden, who was playing as Gondor. Um, I don't think many of his units actually did get to 100. His Pelagir Marines, 124. So his only unit that actually breached 100 kills was his Pelagir Marines, a skirmisher unit. And then Dodgy Gob, who was playing as Erebor. Um, yeah, most of his swords didn't actually get that many kills. He got 117, his best one there. Um, his Grim Hammers, which I think he used far too uh, early, only getting 186, uh, uh, 86, sorry, in uh, 27. But his general getting 344, like he put them in that choke point. If he put those two in there as well, geez, that would have been nasty. Um, his spears, the best one getting 184 kills, well done to them. And then his crossbows, 373, 414. And the other two, nearly, uh, th these two nearly getting 200. And this one getting 214 as well. So, I mean, that is where all his kills have come from. And geez. He got a lot of kills. That shows the power of that second wall there. Um, it really, really is uh, slightly overpowered a bit. It's why I think Kerondras is a really good one. You need to fight like a 2v1 or a 3v2. Um, and certainly not fight with strong... If you're going to do a 3v2, you cannot bring two dwarven armies. You'd do too well. You need to bring like Dale and uh, maybe Dol Guldur or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed, please do remember to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new around here. Uh, if you would like to see more... Um, Rise of Mordor content, please do subscribe and leave a comment as well uh, to let me know that you want to see more Rise of Mordor stuff and show your support and then it'll let me know to do more of this stuff because I know you guys really enjoy it and I'll make sure to try and get as many vids of Rise of Mordor out as possible. And until next time, Legionnaires, bye for now.